Good day, viewers. Welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. That is I. Jesus, the magic man. I've discussed this with believers through the years of my activism, and they tell me, oh, David, it's not magic. It's God. Jesus didn't perform magic. Oh, no, 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 no. He doesn't do magic. Well, here's the definition of magic. An extraordinary power or influence from a supernatural source. God is spirit, Jesus said, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. We're talking about divine power, supernatural power. I can call it magic all I want because that's pretty much what it is. So Christians claim that these miracles and signs and wonders that are recorded in this book called the Bible actually occurred two to 3,000 years ago. Well, let's talk about a couple of these things, and then we'll see if Christians can do the same. Jesus heals a Roman centurion slave of sickness, now found in Luke chapter 7. Pretty interesting story. This Roman centurion had a sick slave. Of all things, a slave. You'd think Jesus would have said something about that, but he didn't. So the centurion found Jesus and said, Jesus, come heal my slave. He's sick. Jesus sent the word and magic. The magic man, Jesus, healed the centurion's slave. The story goes on in chapter 7 of Luke. Here's another magic thing that Jesus performed, allegedly, uh, in verse 12 of chapter 7 of Luke. Now, as he approached the gate of the city, a dead man was being carried out. A funeral procession, a young man died. The mother of the man was grieving, right? He's dead. He ceases to exist. And, of course, Jesus, the magic man, comes to the rescue, allegedly. Verse 13, when the Lord saw her, it said he felt compassion for her. That's what most of us would do. We have compassion for people. And he said to her, don't weep, woman. And he came up, and here we go, Jesus, the magic man, touched the coffin. He didn't just touch it to steady the coffin. He touched it. He had a reason to do that. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise, Woohoo! Supernatural miracle. And the dead man sat up and began, began to speak. So here we have some magic performed by this guy called Jesus. So where are you headed with this, David? Hold on here. I got a good ending for you here in a moment. Now, the story goes on where we find the uh, John the Baptist disciples the forerunner of Jesus, allegedly, the actual alleged cousin of Jesus. Some of his disciples came searching for Jesus. They found him, and they asked Jesus, are you the one we are looking for? John sent us out to look for the true Son of God, the Messiah. Are you the one we search for? So let me pick up reading in verse uh, number 20 of Luke chapter 7. And when the men came to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you. Are you the expected one? Verse 22, Jesus answered and said to them, here you go. Go and report to John what you have seen and heard. What? The signs, the wonders, the miracles of Jesus. This is a little bit boring, but hold on here because I'm going to flip a page of the gospel of John and I'll make this really exciting. So these alleged magical tricks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, go and tell John what you've seen and heard. And here's the things that you're to tell John. Things that Jesus the magic man allegedly did. Number one, the blind receive sight. I wish that were true. I wish believers that were filled with this so-called power of God would go out and heal some people that were blind. I don't like seeing people suffer. If I had magical power, and so would you, we would go out and heal these people. I would like to do that. In fact, I was at a mega church a couple weeks ago. I love doing this. And we didn't have any activism one week, so my buddies were all busy, so I went out by myself on a Sunday morning, went into a local mega church, South Austin, a couple blocks from where I live, and I walked in, had some great conversation with people like I always do, asking questions and so forth. And I noticed they had a place in that large auditorium for people in wheelchairs. Yes. And here are the preachers talking about this magical guy named Jesus, this perfect loving deity called the Lord Jesus Christ, who can heal all manner of disease and sickness and alleviate human suffering. And here I saw four people in wheelchairs sitting in a little corner wielding by me, and I wanted to say something. I wanted to say, hey, 
why doesn't this magic man heal you? Well, we know that stuff doesn't happen. So Jesus told these disciples, go back and tell John the things you've seen and heard and the things that I do. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk. I would like to see people that are lame walk. I would love for a Christian to come under the bridge with me and grow some legs on my double amputee homeless friend who I try to get food to every Saturday morning. I'd love to see that. I would love to see him be able to walk again. We know that ain't going to happen. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. I had a guy tell me not long ago, a pastor I talked to, believe it or not, it's true. He said, David, I've seen dead people risen. I've prayed and people have risen from the dead. Wow, I hear these claims often. Now, here's something I want to say, and I'm going to quit beating this dead horse because I use this scripture all the time, especially on the weekends with believers and even on my show. This is it. Bear with me a little more patience, and I will leave this one alone for a while. So this time, instead of quoting it, I'm going to read it. Here we go, John chapter 15, sorry, John chapter 14, one more time, the alleged words of Jesus. Truly, truly, he didn't just say it once, he said it twice. True, true, I say to you, who's the you? He who believes in me. Oh, that's a tough one. Every single person that puts their trust in this book called the Bible who claims to be a Christian, this is for you, everybody. He who believes in me, the works that I do. In other words, the magical works that I allegedly did 2,000 years ago in this book called the Bible. All the works that I do, he or she will do also. Wow, that's a lot there. And the greater works will they do than I even do because I go to the Father and give you the power to do it. Now, <laughs> you can't get off the hook if you're a believer. Jesus said to all who believe, a sign of a true believer is for you to go out and perform the same magic tricks that Jesus allegedly did. Just like all the other God, man, saviors and myths we've had thousands of years ago, primarily that predated Christianity, the same plagiarized miracles, signs, and wonders from Lord Krishna and all the others, Apollo and all the other deities, and then came Jesus, Muhammad, and the others. It's all the same. I don't see it ever happening. I don't see signs and wonders. I don't see magic tricks performed. If you want to prove that this is all true and real, please stop with conjecture. Please stop with talk, talk, talk. Talk is cheap. I want to see some action. I had a guy send me a message today in my a preaching humanist show commenting on one of my episodes. He was pretty angry. I must have pissed him off because I demand evidence all the time. And of course, what I get all the time from believers, they just start quoting the scriptures. So Jesus clearly said, you shall do greater works than I do. All who believe the same magic tricks Jesus did thousands of years ago, allegedly, you're supposed to do it. I don't see it and I will put the weight of evidence on believers all the time. If you're a fellow atheist and you want some good scriptures to use for believers and you don't want them to try to take you down the rabbit hole of Christian philosophy, they like it down those dark holes because they can't show you any evidence down there. It's all talk. Put the weight of evidence on them. Use John chapter 14. Whatever you ask in my name, believe and you shall receive. Greater works will you do than I did, Jesus said, to all who believe. Show me some greater works that Jesus did. Everything I just read in Luke chapter 7, all the signs and wonders and miracles that Jesus did, come on, you know it's all talk. Put the weight of evidence on believers. Get them to think. Maybe they'll have a tipping point one day. I'm studying that now. It's possible they might just start figuring this stuff out. The more we question, the more we put hard questions and weight of evidence back on them. And yes, I do use the Bible to show them how wrong it is and show them you don't need this magical belief system, alleged magical belief system. What we need is reality, rationalism, and the human enlightened mind to move us ahead. Uh, one more thing. There's a few cases where Christians attempted to do the same magic tricks Jesus said. They actually took this by faith. Now, I'm going to tell you this. So some of you may get upset at me saying this. There are some Christian evangelists on TV, big-name preachers throughout the years that literally take this book as pure fact. I did it as a young preacher years ago. They would take John 14, the scripture I read to you, Luke chapter 7, all these miracles and magic tricks that Jesus, the magic man, allegedly did, and they believe they can do it. I got to give them respect. At least they try, right? I did it. 
A guy named Pat Robertson from the 700 Club. Most of us have learned to hate what that guy does and what he says about people. Yes, kind of entertaining, but yes, it's true. He has taken a group of people many times, and on the 700 Club throughout the years, if a storm was approaching the continental U.S., it's usually the U.S., for some reason they care more about the, in America than other countries. We care about all humans. But they, the Christians, would stand, and Pat Robertson would stand, facing the wind, facing the hurricane, and in the name of Jesus, they commanded the storm to stop. Magic, just like Jesus did. Well, the storm came through. That happened in Puerto Rico, Houston, Florida, and other places. It never does work. At least they tried. Got to give them credit for that, and they believe this book, but it never happens. Uh, Rick Perry tried magic. Remember Rick Perry? Uh, former governor of Texas many years ago, the worst Texas drought in history 10, 15 years ago. I'm a Texan. I've been here for years. I remember that. Rick Perry uh, met with thousands of Christians in the, um, where was it? In Houston, the Astrodome, Astrodome. They joined together in prayer, believing for magic, just like Jesus said, right? Greater works you will do than I did, Jesus said. They prayed for rain. And guess what happened? It finally rained two or three months later. And guess who got the credit? Of course, the Christian God. Give him credit. At least he tried to perform some magic. And of course, I will confess. I'm an old dude now, but way back in the 70s when I was a young preacher, I tried magic. I did. I took this stuff literally. I've told you this story many times about Mrs. Garcia, my second mother. I loved her dearly. My buddy, Reuben, uh, one of my best friends, I was, um, well, as a teenager and preteen, we were best friends. I used to go over to their home, and she would cook me dinners, and I'd spend the night over there, and she was like, they were like my second family. Anyways, years went by. I started preaching in my early 20s and mid-20s. She had cancer. I told Reuben, I'm going to come pray for her in the name of Jesus. We will remove the cancer in the name of Jesus. I got my youth group, a bunch of young uh junior high, middle school kids, high school, and even a couple college-age kids met with me at the church. We joined in a circle, held hands in the name of Jesus. We got our faith built up. We claimed the Bible, the Word of God, all the scriptures about healing. I was going to go out and do some magic. Jesus, the magic man. Jesus said, he's given us the same power to do the same works. A sign of a true believer, Mark 16, we will lay hands on sick and they will recover. That's what it says. Doesn't say maybe, they will. I took my group with me, went to Mrs. Garcia's house. She was already diagnosed with a serious uh, illness, a cancer. She had about a week or two to live. I said, I don't worry about what the doctors say. We're going to pray. I prayed in the name of Jesus. I believed it with all my heart. And we spoke in tongues. We rebuked Satan. We rebuked the sickness. I took this book of magic literally by faith. Well, about four days later, I called Reuben. said, how's your mom doing? I was expecting her to be healed, just like Jesus told us to do, the magic man Jesus. And of course, she died. So not once did I question God. Nope, not at that time. I didn't have any doubts at that time. It took me years later to figure this stuff out. So, yep, Jesus, the magic man, I think not. Jesus, a man of myths, I think so. It'd be nice if we had magic. It'd be nice to have a magic pill and we could just cure all types of disease and sickness and human suffering, but that's not reality. So the reality check is, folks, if you believe in this stuff, it's all in your head. That's it. All right, well, thank you for watching The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. All right. I am finished.